The Handmaid's Tale is back for its highly anticipated fourth season in which rebel handmaid June leads an all-out assault on the oppressive Gilead regime. I'm Rob Lacuria, Senior Editor at Gold Derby. I'm here with McKenna Grace, who co-stars as Esther Keys, the calculating teenage bride of an older commander who rules her rural household with an iron fist. Now, McKenna, most people who are seeing this interview haven't seen all of season four yet. I've been lucky to see most of it and I'm still, I think I'm going to go and have to get some therapy after <laughs> watching it because it's pretty hardcore. What do you, what were your thoughts initially when you were cast as Esther Keys about who this character is? Well, I mean, I was totally stoked to even get the audition for Handmaids. I was like, oh, <gasps> Oh my goodness. Actually, I never thought that I'd book it, but I mean, here I am. Uh, it's crazy, but I totally thought that she was so cool. Um, I mean, it was just a random thing. And I was like, how did this end up happening? It was really, really, really exciting. I think that she's such an interesting character to get to play, especially with all of her like all over the place emotions and just the fact that she's this little like miniature bride little wife that just walks around this household smoking her cigarettes ordering around all the handmaids and the guards and it's just crazy <laughs> i know like when i first saw her i was expecting the storyline to be more about all oh, this poor young woman has been like oppressed and she's so young and it's like no that's not exactly what she is at all she's a badass and uh mm -hmm. she kind of and she's also got a whole bunch of stuff going on in her head like she's slightly unhinged but she's super in control so what tell us the audience what who she is like how did you get inside her head who is this woman well i mean mrs keys asked her she's i mean it's funny hearing you say like this woman because i mean it's like i, know, I do right? i her as like this little like <laughs> miniature serena -esque, like little woman wife thing but then she has these really like sensitive moments where she goes and she opens up to June. And I think that everybody, you know, whenever they watch it initially, they're like, oh my God, she's so young. But then as it keeps going, they start to get used to her and kind of view her as like an adult wife. Though just the moments where she opens up or she loses her cool or starts acting more childish or switches up her emotions, it really reminds you, you know, oh crap, this is, you know, like an unstable, abused broken 14 year old girl wife that we're dealing with at any moment she could just change up and everything could go wrong so I mean I think that that little bit keeping you on edge was really cool but I mean she was a really cool character to get to play because she's just so put together at times but then the very next second she could be you know yelling at June or murdering a guardian you know <laughs> yeah like I, I've been calling her woman on purpose because I just felt like I couldn't call her a girl. Like she's yeah. too, she's too mature for that. Like I have a 13 year old daughter. So it's like, I would never call my daughter a woman yet. She's still a baby in my eyes, but um, yeah. Esther Keys is really interesting to me. Uh, and that's why uh, it brings me to this question. She's a strange character to play. She comes across controlled and tough but there are so many glimpses that we get to see of her being, it may be slightly unhinged because of all the abuse she's had to deal with, but she's also really vulnerable, and which you, you've touched on under the surface. They're the best parts about this character because we really start to get a glimpse into her. And, and I think you really nailed that part of her character because I started to really feel for her, even though we should be feeling that she's an awful villain. So I'm wondering how difficult it is to portray vulnerability uh, when you're playing someone who's supposed to be strong and powerful, is that a very difficult thing to get right? Well, I mean, it's not so much, um, you know, staying as this little vulnerable, broken girl. She is just completely strong and powerful and she has all these, but she has just, you know, all these emotions and these things that she's going through going on underneath the surface whenever she's, you know, strong and composed, but she, you know, she has her little cigarette and she's like, uh, I don't know, what if there were drones? They could see us. Well, I'm not worried, you know, everything's great. But also you need to do this. She just has all these switch ups and all these things that she just has. Sorry, I get <laughs> excited talking about it. I'm just so happy. But I think that she has all of these ideals and ideas that she has in her head whenever June really gets there. And whenever June is sick and hurt and she's not, you know, taking charge like she thought she would, she gets upset and 
that childlike anger comes through. Um, though it was really interesting to get to play a character who's so quick to switch up her emotions. One minute she's this regal housewife and then the next she's yelling at Janine over eating, you know? Um, but it's really special whenever you get to see uh, just those more intimate moments between her and June. Cause at the end of the day, although she is this overly mature, you know, wife, she's just, you know, a broken, not girl, not woman, you know, she's just. Teen. Yeah. She's a teenager. Teen. And, like, and just like, needs somebody there for her. And that's why I just love the relationship between her and June. It's so odd, you know, and it's just, it's weird. And it makes you feel like, oh God, what's even going on? But it's just sweet whenever she goes and she lays next to June and. Yeah. Oh. Um, <laughs> it's, I, I mean, without sounding patronizing, it, it, it's difficult, I think, for any actor to portray a teenager uh, authentically because teenagers, as we, we've all been there, and some of us even had children who have become teenagers, and we know how volatile they can be and they're going through so many emotions and they're learning about themselves and their place in the world. So you've got all of that. Then you're playing this character in a future dystopia, which is, you know, very out there in terms of um, what, you know, the violence and the confronting, confronting nature of the show. So you've got a lot there going on. So what were the things that you were most uh, focused on before shooting started in trying to uh, give this character something real for the audience to kind of hang on to? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's hard playing a teenager. It's hard being a teenager. And it's especially hard, you know, playing or being a teenager who's been abused like Esther has. So I always wanted to be very careful telling her story because this is actually a good point that I wanted to bring up is that um, I was honored that Miss Elizabeth and Mr. Bruce Miller like actually chose to use me, a real 14 year old to play Esther because usually they'll hire somebody who's like 18 or 20 or 16 to play younger. Um, and I just, I think that it's important because a long time ago, Miss Octavia Spencer, whenever I was shooting Gifted, she told me that like, if I go and I read all the positive comments and believe them, then I have to go and read the negative comments and believe them too. So just don't read any. But I have been seeing that people, a couple of people have been like, oh, why would they hire a 14 year old for this? This is way too dark. The subject matter, she shouldn't be doing this. But if you're that upset about a 14 year old having to play this character who's been raped and abused and sold off and married to this old man, then maybe, you know, we should be upset and doing something for the 14 year olds who that's their reality. Cause it's everywhere all the time. This happens to girls, whether, you know, and it's not just made up in Gilead and I don't know, there's just, yeah a lot of things that came with playing Esther that I wanted to make sure that I did right. And I'm glad that I got to play her because I, I hope that I made people feel uncomfortable whenever they watch it. I really hope because then I just kind of hope that they talk about it and it'll make them, you know, upset to see my character going through all of that. So maybe it'll make them upset for all the girls and women and everyone who has to go through that. Yeah, that's exactly, I'm so glad you raised that because Maybe for three seconds, I thought, oh, look, you know, they've cast the Kenna Grace. I know how old you are. That's a, This is a really deep and dark show for someone of her age to be part of. But you know what? It's going to make it all the more powerful to remind us that 14-year-old girls, women, whoever, whatever you want to call them, are actually more sophisticated than a lot of us give you guys credit for. <laughs> and, um, especially someone like yourself, and, you know, I'm speaking from experience, but, you know, you can be quite emotionally intelligent. And I think you've probably been able to give a, a whole different perspective to the show and to the, the crew and cast, especially Elizabeth and Bruce, um, to make this thing feel a bit more real. And it did. It was very confronting, uh, particularly episode one. Let's talk about episode one, because most people watching this probably have seen it by now. Directed by Lizzie Moss, who is one of my favourite people to ever speak to. She's just a joy. I'm wondering given that you work so closely with her on, on set and also as your director. And she was, that was just her first time on, on the being the director chair. What are the, some of the things or strengths about her that she brings to the show that you, you really treasured? 
I am so glad that you asked me about like Lizzie because in interviews and stuff, just randomly, I always have to bring up how like much I love and appreciate her. Oh, this makes me happy because honestly, <laughs> I could rant about how amazing Elizabeth Moss is for hours. She, I respect her as a human being and as an actress so, so, so much. Just the like, presence that she brings onto the set is so professional yet you feel like you can approach her and have a whole conversation with her about something random you know she just and she just has like such a nice vibe whenever you yeah. talk to her she's really really kind yet just in a second she turns on that june osborne face where she's all serious and she's ready to kill some commanders and it's just her professionality is just incredible. I love, I don't even know if that's a word. I what am I saying? Let's do it. <laughs> but <laughs> she's so professional on set and in her acting is some of the best acting. She's just one of the best actresses that I've ever, ever worked with. And I completely adore her as a human, as an actress, as a director, as just whatever she wants to be. I completely think that she's amazing. When you're um when the two of you are on set together and you're playing each of your roles and she's directing as well, do you recall? Because I think you guys, I mean, we'll talk about how this shooting was interrupted, but when you were shooting this some time ago, what when the cameras stopped rolling and she's back in director mode, can you recall some of the things she was saying to you or whispering to you to 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 maybe change the way you had played a scene or to give you some notes about your performance? Well, the thing is that was really special is that um. Having an actor as a director is really cool because they understand what you're going through to make your character seem like just all these things going on under the surface. So she was just, um, whenever I had emotional scenes that she was having to direct, she was just really, really great about it because she knows what it's like. And I don't know, I just felt like if I needed to, then I could do just like 20 more takes and she would guide me through it and help me with it. And I don't even know how to describe it. She's just absolutely magical, Miss Elizabeth Moss. She actually, oh, this was hilarious. She actually, Elizabeth Moss taught me how to smoke a cigarette. Um, wow. So that was pretty fancy. Nope, fake, fake. fake. Fake cigarettes for the show, but I mean, I wow. guess I, that was really special is having, you know, Lizzie Moss teach you how to smoke a fake cigarette for so. nothing, for no other purposes except for- No, it doesn't matter because you're an actor and you will be, you, over your long and successful career, you are going to have to play characters who smoke cigarettes or do bad things like mm -hmm. that. Children don't smoke. And, um, you know, I, I think, isn't it funny how little costume- or sets or uh, props really help you imbue a character. <clears throat> Having a little, a 14 year old person, you know, uh, very yeah. elegantly smoking a cigarette, does that kind of thing really help you to get inside the head of this of the character? Yes, I actually totally fought to keep my cigarette in one of my first scenes. I think that it was um, the one where I'm pacing around and I'm like, uh, oh, I think it's whenever I run up to her and I'm like, you're finally out of bed. I can't believe it. You're you know, praise be. Uh, I really fought to keep the cigarette in there. Well, I don't know. It wasn't much of a fight. They were like, oh, okay. Yeah. We totally like whatever you want to do. And that was also something really special is that they were totally, you know, helped me just be creative with uh, the character. But it, it did help, you know, because she's sitting there and she's pacing and she has like, I don't know, there's, what if there was that, you know? And she just like, yeah. it's just, it's, helpful to have the prop and be able to just mess with it and then throw it and toss it and you know it's it, it did really help especially because that just it's so out of place it's know, having this little itty bitty wife and then she has this cigarette she's pacing around in her high heels and her bun and her cigarette and yeah it's weird it's, it's super <laughs> off-putting and like it's a subconscious thing. Like you're like, oh, she's very young and she's smoking. And all of a sudden you start realizing, oh yes. And she's been abused and she's married to a really old man. And she's in this ridiculous, horrible, oppressive regime. And it just starts to go on and on. It's yeah, it, really helps, uh, it really helps to remind you how quickly she's had to mature this little 14 year old girl in this household where she's the wife, she's the mistress and smoking her little cigarettes. Oh my God. In the farm, you know? 
Yeah, you know, uh, it reminds me when I spoke to Elizabeth last year, um, you guys were still shut down because of the pandemic, like most of us around the world, no matter what you do as a job. I know productions on season four were shut down after two weeks, I think. So you just got into the groove of it and then bang, you had to all go home. Mm -hmm. And it took some months, I think in September, October, whenever it was, you guys resumed. But what was it like to be you know embarking on this grand new adventure in your um still still quite young career and then it was ripped away so suddenly what were the feelings at the time well uh god it's so funny we were uh i remember like we were talking about COVID and we were like what even is this it's not going to be a huge deal it's probably like a common cold or something we'll be back in two weeks and then we were like what why is production shut down what is going on uh it wasn't like a common cold and we were not shut down for two weeks. We were <laughs> shut down for a while. Uh, I think, is that, I think about seven months. Yeah. yeah. About seven months. We were shut down for a while and luckily I didn't grow because for some reason, <laughs> I, just, I just don't, I look constantly <laughs> young, but. Imagine if you had a big growth spurt and you changed all of a sudden, it wouldn't have worked. That would have been really bad, but luckily, uh -huh. over the course of seven months, I did not grow an inch. Um, Good for you. That's great. But it was it was crazy because we had just gotten into the groove of it. I just started figuring it all out, and then um, whenever we came back, I had to figure it all out again. And then I was like, "Oh, why did I do that with my acting choices? I should have switched it up, and I should have done this because now I understand the character better." And I'm like, "Oh Lord, what even is going on?" But it was crazy having to come back after seven months of being gone. I was like, oh, right. But I mean, it was really one of the things that helped me get through quarantine was knowing that I had to, you know, that I got to come back to Handmaids. That was really special. Yeah. And I'm glad that you guys were able to finish the season because I know so many people who are so excited about this show coming back. It has such a devoted family. I'm one of them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely one of them. You know, something that really interests me about your career, McKenna, is that you're still so young and yet if you look, anybody looks at your credits, you have been working for quite some time and a lot of people will know you for playing the younger version of a central character. So, like, you're young Captain Marvel. That's how I know you. <laughs> yeah. And you're young Tonya Harding, which is also how I know you. You're young Emma. So my kids and wife love that show Once Upon a Time and know you from that. And you were also in Fuller House. And my son reminded me, oh, yeah, she was in Fuller House because he loves that show. So you've been in a lot of shows. Um, what's it like to play the younger version of the central character? Do you bond with the actress who's playing the older version or do you sometimes never see? Well, it's so funny. Yeah, um, I do play the um, younger actress. Most of the time I play a younger version of Gizmo. My dog. <laughs> um, I do play the younger actress of a lot of um, people. It's fun. It's fun, but it's also really cool to have your own standalone character that you get to develop and create yourself. But I mean, uh, sometimes, like with Captain Marvel, I did not get to meet Miss Brie Larson a ton on set because of how, you know, everything was just yeah. so quick and short. But on Haunting of Hill House, I played the younger version of Theo Crane. And with the actress, I got to talk with her a lot. And we actually shared a little journal that we'd pass back and forth and write in it from the perspective of our character. And, you know, I always make sure to really flesh it out so that I'm a convincing younger version. Like I'll go and watch their other movies and I'll make sure that, you know, if they have added in any little like ticks or mannerisms that they're doing as the character, then I'll try my very best to, you know, imitate maybe whatever they're doing. But it is funny, I think. Oh, I think next year I'll have been acting for 10 years. <laughs> wow. That's, that's it's crazy. Amazing. I've been acting for way over half of my life and I absolutely love it. It's what I want to do from, you know, as long as I can live. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I think, I think that's probably a good sign. You've been working for so long and you've got plenty more opportunities <laughs> to continue working. And McKenna, you, you were really great in The Handmaid's Tale. Congratulations on that role. I am totally excited to watch it tomorrow. Thank mm -hmm. you.